Hi, welcome again to another tutorial. My name is Dr. Jude Jepo. Today we are going to be doing regional residual separation. Regional residual separation is a form of filtering. Now, filtering uh, in potential field data prior to analysis and uh, interpretation is an essential uh, thing to do. The overall objective is to condition your data uh, for optimal interpretation of the anomalies as they will relate to geology. Hence, uh, to achieve the desired results, this process must be done with a geologic constraint. Also, the purpose of the analysis must be considered. For example, if you are doing filtration for oil exploration, uh, the things that you may do will be different from that of solid minerals uh, or for groundwater exploration. Now, filtration can be done either in the space domain or in the frequency and uh, wave number domain. Now, traditionally, filters are used to separate long wavelengths, that's for deep anomalies, and short wavelengths, that's for shallow wavelength anomalies. Now, the basic um, uh, types of filtering, uh, especially for potential field data, an example that we're going to do today is magnetic data, are just uh, the numeric, numerical techniques, and um, this is done in the space domain. And uh, the frequency slash wave number domain filtering, this is uh, geophysical. But today we are going to be using uh, the polynomial fitting to do the regional residual separation. Polynomial fit fitting, uh, it's um, essentially what we do to establish the regional trend within the field. And uh, this is done using least squares which is applied to the observed magnetic intensity to ob obtain the, the describable surface here. So what's happening is that the output regional data set is subtracted from the original as we will see. But first of all, let us just load in our data and see how this is done. So we can go to file here, project, we create a new project and in this project, let me name it regional residual separation, or let's just say separation. Any meaningful name will do. And um, okay, so that does it. So what we are going to do is to load in add the database that we we'll use. We are going to use this database here. So uh, this database contains quite a lot, but we are just interested in just a few of them. And um, I've worked on this data set here, so that's why you're seeing a lot here. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to go to database tools and filters. Like I said, this is a form of filtering. We have different form of filters, like the high pass, low pass. And in subsequent videos, these are the things that we're going to be talking about. We're going to do tutorial on them. So stay tuned for that particular tutorial to drop. But Today we are using, we are going to do the polynomial uh, filtering. Now the channel to trend is the Z. We need the Z and the, the actual trend, the, the channel has not been created. So, but this creates it on the fly. So let's name this regional and, um, oh, okay. And uh, this one is the residual. Okay, so the order to trend we can have from first order, second order, but we are using the first order. So click OK, that will run it. So it's done now. Uh, don't be surprised, nothing is outputting, but once we click anywhere here and say display all, it displays what we have done. So this is the regional and this is the residual. So the next thing to do is to contour or grid this particular thing. What has been done here is that you see the regional data was subtracted from the original TMI, and that's why you're having this residual here. So that is what uh, the residual regional residual separation is doing. So these are the regional data, and this is the residual. So we're going to contour the regional. Most times it comes out 
like lines. So let's use minimum curvature with channel to grid. We are grading the regional, the output grid. Let us still name it regional or give it any meaningful name. Grid cell size, we can leave it blank, but we can still choose the grid cell size of 125. It doesn't matter. So this will happen. So we see this regional as lines. Now we can still grid uh, the residual data using the minimum curvature. So this is the residual. So we name this residual. And uh, that pretty much does it. So if we want to make comparisons, we can now grid the, the TMI here to see the difference that we're going to have. So let's name this TMI and observe the differences. Whoops, TMI. So we're going to observe the differences here. So what we're going to do is to, let's take this off, let's save this, let's take this off and let's um, tile this vertically. Let's have this here. So we can now do this. So we can go to this uh, utilities here and point values. Let's load the TMI and load this residual. So we can now point and see the differences. So this is the value for the TMI and this is the value for the residual. So effectively, we have removed the regional effects from this data. And uh, what's going to happen now is any analysis or interpretation that you are making now, you'll be more focused. Uh, doing this essentially will be for uh, the, the shallow anomalies that you want to analyze for like for mineral exploration and the rest. If you want to do for deeper sources, uh, this particular process is not needed. So thank you. If you have any question, you can send me a mail. I'm sure I'm going to be, an, uh, be able to answer your question. So uh, if this has been helpful to you, just hit the like button and subscribe so that you will continue to get our updates. Thank you very much for watching and bye.